Welcome back inside Schmodown fans on the Pit Boss Ken Napsack. And as you can see, my guest is someone you're very familiar with, but that's a new vision of this old face. Well, you're still young, not old. Excuse me, I'm the one with gray. This is Ben Bateman. What's up, everybody? I'm the, excited to be back. It's the second time I'm on the set with you, Ken. Yeah, it's good to have, be working with you. It was great calling a match with you. That was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, you're yeah. good at this. The boss Bateman, what I don't, I, I'll st I'm looking at something different here. I'm not seeing in, any red. I don't see the case. What is going on here? Well, you know, Ken, there's a, there's a couple things happening this year. One of them is I'm dealing with kind of a black and white issue. And I mm -hmm. felt that, uh, you know, red, anger, flair, we don't need that right now. You know, this is business. We're, okay. we, we're, we're writing some wrongs in the schmud on this year, and uh, I need to be a part of that. This, a lot of people are calling this the team action civil war. <laughs> You know, you guys, and I, I, you know, let's, t let's talk about everything here where you guys, you guys have broadcasted together. You've worked together, your friends, you used to go to Fuddruckers together. You yeah. all these things together. Next thing you know, you're being put through an Ikea table and now this is where we're at and all hell's breaking loose. And then you make this decision uh, to, to fight against the suspension. I still don't understand that one. Just, just go back to the beginning, how you guys formed as a team, as, as a friendship and, and to where we are now. Well, you know, Ken, uh, we've been working together a long time and mm -hmm. we continue to work together. Um, business, you know, the, the people need to get what they want. And those shows that we to do, they've been around a long time. We're not gonna, we're not gonna cease doing what the fans want us to do. But when it comes to this thing, um, you know, he made a pretty bad decision. And uh, you know, he's he's a smart guy sometimes, and he's dumb as a rock other times. And I think we can both we can both see what's happening here. So it's really unfortunate for the for the fans of Team Action that wanted to remain impartial and they wanted to be fans of us both. But he kind of forced my hand. And look, I don't think anybody would deny I'm a, I'm a better player. I'm just better than he is. And so I'm going to get the chance to show that. And uh, that's that's pretty much that. I, and I've always admired your confidence. Ben. Thank you, Ken, And I think you. you know that. And I admire your style. Um, you're saying, look, you're both good players. And I, I'm going back when you guys both showed up. I knew you more than I knew Andrew. Yep. Drew, yep. Uh, whatever he likes to be called this week. And so I had a lot of hope in you, you guys as a team. And I, and I would say early on, it seemed as though, you know, people, because I fought, remember, I fought Nerds Watch. We took you it's guys second on. second match, yeah. And you both had moments. And, and Drew surprised me, but you confirmed what I thought. Yeah. So it's, I know you feel you're the better player, but Drew's maybe got some of the higher profile victories oh, under yeah, his belt. Oh, yeah, big time. What, uh, you, you still confident even then? Or you're not overlooking him, right? Yeah, I mean, You we, know him better than anyone. We did a, you know, just before this all started, we did an oral history of team action on our show, The Action Guys, you can find on Collider Podcast Network. And mm -hmm. uh, it's a, about an hour long. We take from beginning to end the whole story of how we, how we met, how we started working together, we formed the team, and then some of those beats. And I would argue mm -hmm. that match against you was the first sort of coming out party for team action. Mm -hmm. There was the bit with our mothers, people like that a lot. Right. Um, you know, that was all great. And, and we were really into the theatrics and the pageantry of Schmodown. Yeah. Um, last year was a weird one. There was supposed to be, it was supposed to be my year in singles. And he was supposed to sort of be set up to have this moment with Dan at the live show. It, that, that all kind of looked like the way it was breaking down. We knew how it was going to go. Mm -hmm. And of course, as most things in the Schmodown happen, this is not wrestling. Mm -hmm. The outcomes are not predetermined. So... You, you do actually get a chance to change the story if you want to. And he did exactly that. He had two enormous wins, two massive wins that yeah. put him on a crazy track and puffed his head up as big as it could possibly get. Can you pinpoint the moment where this clicked for you guys? Is it as you're falling down through the air, going through a table, you're thinking this isn't working anymore? Or is it something earlier? Is it you watch his head get big after defeating Dan Merle, which I was there. I was sitting out there. We were yeah. watching the screens. Uh, Harloff's on camera like this. Right, it's one of the craziest uh, moments. It was it blew everyone's mind, and uh, was that the moment? When did it begin? Uh, the, where I where I knew there was cracks, uh, and it was getting it was getting tough. It was phase one was Ooh. after he beat Riley, and I was watching and thinking to myself, you know what? If I lose one more match in singles here, mm -hmm. I'm cooked. I got I got nothing. Um, and I looked at JTE's career. I know that he had a down moment for really coming back and going on that run. And I, and I, I looked at that and I thought, okay, I can, mm -hmm. that could be my story. But like, imagine if he had beaten Roca, uh, in that, and then he had beaten all three of those guys. It was pretty hard to imagine existing on a team where I was clearly pulling more weight with somebody who at that point really believed, was believing his own hype. And mm -hmm. I could, I knew that was, a, and, but the real, the real moment was after, after getting that fourth win with Riley, I knew 
that I was going to talk to Drew, win or lose after that match. Because wh whether I lost or whether I won at Spectacular, I knew there was a chance that I wanted to run this thing back. Mm -hmm. And he confirmed what my suspicion was, which is there was no way he was going to allow that. His ego, he couldn't allow me to, to, to leave the team. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it was probably somewhere in the conversation, there's some part of me inside that knew something was coming. Even if it mm -hmm. wasn't that table that day, it was coming. How bad did that hurt? Mind you, we've got the, you, there's a lot of violence in the action pass. Yeah. The Roka spear, all yep. that stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're now on the end of this here. Yeah. <laughs> when you're there on that table, uh, on a broken table, look it up, which is a place I've been in life a lot. Uh, <laughs> what do you, what, what, what is your first thought? Oh, man. Um, shocked. You're mm -hmm. shocked. You're, uh, I was on the, I mean, that hurt. I was on the mm. ground. It's a concrete floor. You know, you go through a table there. It's like playing on the Astrodome in 1982. Yeah. So that yeah. was, I mean, it wasn't exactly, you know, the, a, a, a table of two by fours, right. but I mean, it was still a wooden table. Um, and I think I was just looking up and, and I hadn't, rage didn't hit me until the next day. Yeah. Um, shock, awe, disbelief. As much as I thought someone was coming, I didn't think I was going to get put through a table at that moment. Right. But also a little bit of a monkey off my back. Now I can go and I can, I can just. I can show this league what they needed to see, which was I'm going to be part of a dominant team that's going to win a title, and I'm going to win a belt in singles, and I'm yeah. going to laugh at this guy the whole time. Let's talk about, you know, New York City. I'm there, man. New York yeah. City. We're watching this. You show up. You were hidden in a hotel room in Brooklyn for three days. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> couldn't get outside unless the fans see you and everything, and that happens. I, I was in uh, 30 Rock with Kalinowski, and no one, no one knew Kalinowski was there, and some fans, great guys from London, yeah. uh, UK, stopped us, and we were like, yeah, you can't take a picture. You got a whole, and, and right. they did. They kept the secret. Those are my guys. You're held up. You're, you're getting all pent up knowing that you're going to, you uh, don't want to let this moment go away. Uh, whether it's Dan or Ethan, you didn't care who won. You were there for Harloff. Why? I don't get, I don't, he suspends Andrew for a year. Gone, done. Your enemy is out there outside the gates and you didn't want that. Why? Well, uh, the obvious reason, Ken, is that there's no one in this league at this point that I want to beat more than him. Mm -hmm. So how am I going to do that if he's not playing? Yeah. Uh, the second thing is, and I said this to Harloff there on stage in Brooklyn, what happened the last time you suspended this idiot? He came back, right? He, he steals Dan's entrance at the free-for-all. Mm -hmm. He Everybody goes crazy. He throws up the finger, and then he wins an award for it. I mean, he the guy can't lose. You, yeah. you can't beat him by suspending him. You're just fueling the fire. He's a bully. And what mm -hmm. happens when you when you pay attention to bullies? They just bully more. Mm -hmm. So um, that that that's pretty much that. It, yeah. and as far as you know, New York goes. I mean, that was that was a special moment to get to be the guy to do that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was I was really excited about uh, keeping it a secret, and then and the fans really did validate that excitement when I came out. It was really great. There was a lot of cheer. It, it was, was cool. I was watching from the side there, and I, I see you coming in. You're a tall guy. You're like 6'10", and uh, I'm seeing people. I see your head, and I just, people were giving you love. You've been heralded. You've been respected. Do you feel this is the first time the fans looked at you and saw you as you've seen yourself? Oh, that's a great question. Um, Look, I'm somebody who, who loves this game, and I, mm -hmm. I said that to the fans there, and, and I talked to you about that. Um, it's, this is my, one of my favorite things in the whole world. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm completely obsessed with the Schmodown. And I wanted to be somebody who was a loved character and who also was a loved player. I mean, that mm -hmm. was something I really wanted. But unfortunately, my singles record and some of the really tough losses this last year, I mean, you probably know this, but I, my opponents in 2018 had the highest accuracy rate of any player in the league. I did not know that. Did you know that Frankie Numbers know that? Frankie Numbers, that's do you know that? That's, that's how I got that stat. That's how I got that stat. most of us get our stats. Yeah, and I, I mean, I, the number of times that my opponents hit a five-pointer to clinch the match against me was like seven times out of seven or something. It was like a ridiculous number. So it was hard, but I think I ended the year, and Christian confirmed this to me, that he said, you know, sort of you were a, an up-and-comer, close mm -hmm. to a contender, and he told me now you're elite. And mm -hmm. we'll see. You know, we'll see how my record you know, bears out, but it was nice. I felt that way when I walked in. So you're reaching for the brass ring, but now this guy Bateman feud, this civil war we're talking about, uh, this thing uh, pops up there where you've got a uh, guy choosing Robert Meyer Burnett, yeah. which is captain. It, it, the captain blows my mind. Earplugs all around, a lot of talking in that group. That's interesting. I want to get your thoughts on that. But then beyond that, you choose Bobby Gucci, Tom yeah. Dagnino. Yeah. Goldfish guy? It's best of the business. That, explain that thought. 
he's got a knack, man. He he has a real true knack for for uh, staying level headed, for inspiring his team, for getting in there. I mean, I've said this before, but whether he's giving you useful information or completely erroneous information when he comes in the huddle, it yeah. doesn't matter. It still inspires confidence. Right. Uh, the guy cares. He really cares. He takes it seriously. Mm. I, I love Gucci. He's a he's such a great performer. He's got so many good lines. He's like you know Rex Ryan for the Jets all those years ago. He just def- he just he deflects away from the players. He puts it all on him. Okay, I mean, I'm still a little flabbergasted by that. I'll be honest. But you used to work with the guy. Am I wrong? I did work with the guy, and we've been kicked out of a lot of uh, Woolworths and strip clubs. And I, I I respect him on some levels, fear him on other levels, yeah, and despise him on at least one level. And and. But I also just don't know if he's the best player. And you're and look, uh, Burnett, Burnett's a former Inner Geekdom champion. Burnett does know his stuff. He's been out of the picture for a while. He's got a better track record as a competitor to me. But you're confident in yourself, it seems. I am. Uh, Burnett's been, I heard Burnett's been running a liquor store over in Magnolia. That's what I heard. But, I shop at that one. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. sell some uh, Tennessee Winter Jack. <laughs> yeah, they've got some really some yeah. rare stuff there. Yeah. Um, he's loud. I've always been a fan of the captain. I, I mean, a lot of you guys probably have seen this, but I have, I have uh, moments on camera where he's the, one of the few guys I have respect and shaken hands with. You're probably one of the others, actually. Oh, thank you. Not a lot in this league I have. That's true. Um, and I always like the guy. It's, it's disheartening to see what mm-hmm. he's done. Though I, I do have to say that his flair for the theatrics, man, that recruitment of Drew McQueenie was something else. That was, that was special. I'm still shocked about that, too. Drew did not seem like that type of guy to go that way, but sometimes frustrations in the league will cause you to do things there. I, I'm such a fan when he said, take my hand, son. Yeah. I got so excited. I, mean, I felt like I was watching a movie. I can't, you know, <laughs> but I... I you, he loves his stuff. He I loves do. his I stuff. I really do. Another thing that's going on with you, you've got this thing with Guy, but let's not forget, you were, you were in this team. Yeah. Mark Riley. Oh, yeah. Who's the boss, mm-hmm. which is a great show. Tony Danza, love you, but this is a great team. Uh, but I got to ask you this. Uh, you know, Riley's part of uh, a bigger faction, the Horsemen. Yeah, right. Has he, has he approached you about that? Is there a riff at all going on there? No? There's, there's look, anytime that the word Roca, mm. Horseman, ever has come up, mm. it makes my stomach turn. And I, I don't have any interest in discussing it. It's, we've pretty much been able to stay away from it. I think Riley has enough respect for me to not bring it up. Mm-hmm. Look, I may be having my issues right now with my former teammate, mm-hmm. and there is something happening there that has to be taken care of, and I'm going to take care of it. But you're talking about something toxic, something else entirely. I have no interest or respect for those guys. So no comment from you on that? No Horseman? Yeah, no comment? It's the last time I'm going to say it, Ken. Okay. All right, that's fair. That's fair. we got some big events coming up here. Uh, you out there in the Schmodown world know what's coming up, so I want to talk about this big one here. Let's talk about Chicago. We have got Who's the Boss playing against the odd couple, Jeff, the Insnider, Snyder, Mark, the Android, and Draco. Um, uh, they're former clients of Dagnino. Snyder and Riley, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot going on there. you got Roxy Stryder, their manager. Um, can you play this match? Will you be distracted? Will you be nervous? Will the crowd of, in Chicago, which is going to be big, 800 strong, uh, throw you off? What, what's your thoughts about this one here? Nah, we, no, matter, no matter who we're playing in this match, Ryle's not going to take care of this. This is, this is our destiny, man. I mean, we were, uh, we were one bad question away from a belt already, and there's nothing I can think of that's going to make me happier than getting the ball rolling to win this title in front of that many fans. Um, I have my embarrassing moment. Look, I'll take responsibility for Giancarlo Stanton. I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. It's a great player, though. It, he's, he's a great player. A lot player. of home runs for my Yanks, man. Um, it's not going to happen again. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is a match we're going to win. We are going to be dialed in. Riley's feeling good. He had a great win. You know, I, I'm not worried about the crowd. Not at all. What's next for Ben Bateman? Where do you go from here? You got Guy. You still want to win titles, right? You don't want to get distracted with Guy. You got Riley, who's the boss. You're palling around with Dagnino. By the way, do not go to uh, 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 Sunset Strip with him. You will not wake up where you, where you woke up the day before. Don't do it, all right? What, what's next for Bateman? Well, Ken, I said it last year, um, and unfortunately, some things happened. I got real close. I didn't quite get it, but I'm going to get both belts this year, teams and singles. Okay. Uh, that, that's happening. There's no question there. Uh, if I felt that I had the bandwidth to commit to it this year, I'd go for the first triple belter. I'd beat Cushing to the punch. I believe oh. Cushing will be the first triple belter ever. Mm-hmm. Um, if she doesn't take it this year, then in 2020, it'll be me. Okay. But you can guarantee I'm going to have both belts, 
and you can guarantee I'm going to be looking to defend those belts, and you can guarantee I'm going to be embarrassing that clown of a player, Andrew Guy, in front of all of you the first chance I get. Strong words, passionate words from Ben Bateman, and the term triple belter is also what I use when I go to Sizzler <laughs> and have to take my belt down to the third notch. So, um, Ben, I can't thank you enough for coming on in here. Uh, you've, uh, you, you've always been a player to watch. You've always been a player to listen to. But I think you might have hit the next level, and this is your year to make that run. Napsack, thank you. Thank you for coming in. You guys out there watching Inside Schmodown, you know what to do. Go to patreon.com slash schmodown if you want to support. Check out the tiers. we got live events. we got live streams. we got a lot of things going. This is an important year. Season 6 of Schmodown, that is going to the next level, thanks in large part because of you. Don't forget to go to triviasd.com to get all your schmoes no, uh, at, well, all your movie trivia Schmodown. I'm an old school guy. Schmoes no is still in my brain. Go to your uh, at triviasd.com to get your movie trivia Schmodown information. Bibiani and the team putting together some fun stuff for you to read and make this league even that much more of an experience for you out there in the community. For Ben, I'm the pit boss, Ken Napsuck. One boss to another. We'll see you next time on Inside Schmodown.